If your brake fluid looks like your favorite whiskey, you gotta change it. I'm gonna show you the easiest and cheapest way to flush your motorcycle's old brake fluid and bleed any of the air out of your brake lines. A few important notes before we get going. One, I'm doing this video on my Yamaha R3, but the procedure here is widely applicable to most motorcycles. If you find the video helpful, drop me a like and consider subscribing to the channel. Number two, this video is intended for any motorcycle owner who's doing their regularly required maintenance or just wants to replace their brake fluid. This video is not for a brake system which has been completely drained of all fluid. Number three, the brake system on my bike is a simple setup with one reservoir and caliper in the front and one in the rear. Some bikes, like the MT-07, have two calipers in the front. If you've got two calipers on your bike's front wheel, bleed the caliper further away from the master cylinder first. Number four, check your service manual to see what kind of brake fluid your bike takes. If you don't have a service manual, the master cylinder cap usually has the brake fluid type printed on it. Number five, as you've likely heard before, brake fluid is corrosive, so make sure to cover any painted surfaces you want to protect. There are plenty of ways to do this, but I found that cutting a small hole in an old towel provided me the most protection for my bike. Alright, let's get to it. Yeah, you can get these on Amazon for anywhere between $15 and $25, but making your own is super easy and much, much cheaper. I actually bought the All-Star One Man Bleeder, but I didn't even wind up using it because the bottle that I made worked perfectly. For this, you'll need a bottle, some clear tubing, a couple of drill bits, and some string. Grab yourself an empty plastic bottle, preferably with a wide cap. I found an old vitamin water bottle. Drill a hole in the center of the cap just large enough to accommodate the outside diameter of the hose you're using. Next, grab your hose and double check that it fits. You want the end of the hose to sit at the very bottom of the bottle. 20 to 30 inches of length will likely be more than sufficient. You can get this at Home Depot for about 50 cents a foot. Also, for reference, the hose that I'm using has an inside diameter of 3 16ths of an inch. Most bikes will probably be either 3 16ths or a quarter inch, but check to see what size fits securely on your bike's bleeder screw and just work with that. Now grab a smaller drill bit and drill another tiny hole next to the one you just made. This is going to be your pressure release. It doesn't need to be any larger than an eighth of an inch. It's large enough to allow air to escape from the bottle, but it's going to be small enough not to cause a mess if you knock the bottle over. Now this part is optional, but as a final touch, you can tie a string around the top of the bottle. Using a string will allow you to suspend the bottle over the caliper without having to hold it. By keeping the bottle above the caliper, any air pockets in the tube will go toward the bottle instead of back to the caliper. Now that you've saved yourself about $20, let's bleed your brakes. With your bike protected by your towel, begin by removing the cover from your master cylinder. If you've got a lid on your master cylinder that unscrews, remove it and set it aside. If yours is like the one I've got, remove the screws and detach the lid. After you remove the lid, wipe down the plastic and rubber parts of the lid diaphragm and set them aside. Next, grab a turkey baster or an automotive fluid syringe if you happen to have one. Remove most of the brake fluid from the master cylinder and put it into the bleeder bottle you just made. Top off the reservoir with fresh bleed. Fresh bleed. Top, top off the reservoir with fresh brake fluid, and if necessary, pour some fresh fluid into the bottle as well. The idea here is to have a sufficient amount of fluid in the bottle to submerge the end of the hose, preventing any air from getting back into our system. After this, place the lid back on top of the master cylinder reservoir for a little added protection from spillage and pump the front brake a few times. Move down to the caliper and remove the dust cap from the bleeder screw. Now grab your wrench. If you've got one, use a flare nut wrench, but a regular open-ended or box wrench will work fine. In my case, the bleeder screw is 8mm, yours may or may not be that size. Before going forward, check to make sure that you can loosen the bleeder. If all is well, continue onward. Grab your homemade bleeder bottle and put it in position. I opted to hang it from the end of my handlebar and it seemed to work perfectly fine there. You can use either the closed or open end of the wrench to perform the bleeding. Here you'll see I put the closed end of the wrench onto the bleeder and then I put the hose onto the nipple. I tried using the open end when I did the rear brake and I actually found that it allowed a tighter fit of the bleeder hose. Crack the bleeder open by turning it a quarter turn counterclockwise and begin pumping your brake. 
you'll start to see old fluid fill up the hose and make its way toward the bottom. Continue to pump the brake lever, but periodically stop to check the reservoir and add more fluid. If you allow the reservoir to run dry, you're going to reintroduce air into the line. To avoid this, just keep the reservoir full. Eventually, the fluid coming out of the bleeder will be basically clear. Once you see the clear fluid consistently without any air bubbles, you'll know that you've gotten all the old fluid and the air out of the line. Tighten the bleeder and remove the hose by grabbing it with some wadded up shop towels to avoid any spillage. If you do spill any brake fluid, don't fret. Just make sure to clean it up quickly with some soapy water and just rinse it thoroughly. Now, top off your reservoir to the full mark, reinstall the rubber and plastic diaphragm, and reattach the lid. Pump the brake a few more times to check for any leaks and to test its feel. The brake will now feel nice and firm, not soft or spongy. And that's it, you're all done with your front brake. The procedure is basically identical for the rear brake, though instead of pulling a lever, you're going to be pushing on the brake pedal. Now before you click away, there are a few important things that you need to look out for when doing the brakes on your bike. Depending on the condition and the age of your motorcycle, you may run into a couple of problems. Number one, if you've got a master cylinder with a lid attached by screws, the screws might be stuck. If the screws don't turn easily with your screwdriver, you risk camming out the head of the screw. If you run into this issue, like I did, grab a hammer, place the screwdriver back onto the screw and tap the top of it so that it's firmly lodged into the screw's head. Then push down on the screwdriver with a strong amount of downward force while attempting to turn the screwdriver counterclockwise. Do this slowly and you'll likely hear a little snapping sound. This is the sound you want to hear. That's the sound of the screw coming loose. Now you can remove it easily. Also, if you have a Japanese bike, consider getting a JIS screwdriver. The JIS fasteners look very similar to Phillips screws, but are supposedly slightly different. My buddy got a Vessel JIS screwdriver that he swears by, so I'll link that down below. The second thing you might encounter is brake fluid leaking from the base of the bleeder screw after closing it. This could be indicative of a more serious problem, however, if you notice a small amount of brake fluid leaks from the threads after placing the dust cap back on, it's most likely just residual fluid in the bleeder screw being forced out. Double check this by ensuring the screw is tight, cleaning the caliper, and pumping the brakes. If no additional fluid leaks out, you're in the clear. If more fluid does come out, you'll definitely need to do some further investigation and repairs, which may or may not require a trip to the mechanic. The third thing to watch out for is rusted bleeder screws. If you notice your bleeder screw is rusty or just stuck in place, don't try to use brute force to open it. You'll wind up snapping the head of the bleeder off, and then you're going to open yourself up to all sorts of frustration and a lengthy repair process. Instead, I'd recommend spraying penetrating oil on the bleeder screw once or twice a day for about a week. By the time next weekend rolls around, you shouldn't have any trouble opening the bleeder screw. And finally, one more thing. If you continually add fresh brake fluid, but the fluid coming out of the caliper is still murky or dark and you're absolutely sure that you've cycled out all of the old fluid, this could indicate that your brake lines have degraded and that they need to be replaced. So now you know the easiest and cheapest way to flush your motorcycle's brake fluid. You could do your own brakes in under 30 minutes for under $20. It doesn't get much cheaper than that. Anyway guys, that about wraps up this video. If you found it helpful, hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. If you've got any questions at all, feel free to leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to answer it. Thanks for watching and I'm gonna catch you in the next one. Ride safely.